Good afternoon. Thank you for to my new subscriber for subscribing. That does mean quite a lot to me. Just so it was bit have a bit of a departure today um, from something that I never really talk about. And as much as I appreciate the response from the last video, and I'd like to do many more such videos today, it's a little bit more centric to something that I used to do in the 90s. Now, most of these you can get in a digital format today, but sometimes it's just one of those things. This CD contains Quake 2. Not only does it contain Quake 2, but you can actually put that into CD player and play the soundtrack of Quake 2 if you like the, the soundtrack of Quake 2 enough. These are PC games from the late 90s to mid 2000s, the only exception being uh, Doom 2, which kind of did everything. Um, the only good thing I can say is it didn't turn me into somebody that wanted to start committing violence against people and such, so um, it was escapism. Um, there was more questing elements than some of these things and having to search for easter eggs and such not. I mean, I had the first co uh, Grand Theft Auto, however that is Grand Theft Auto 2, which is a very different beast to the first one. And the first two were the top-down affairs. I mean, also have also Aliens vs Predator 2. Now the first Aliens vs Predator was the better game, in my personal opinion. The, the second one's okay, um, but also the, the other issues with these is most computers and things do not come with drives these days. Um, if you want to play these then you'd have to have an external drive to run these and then an emulator because these come from the time of Windows XP and um, Windows 2000 retrospectively. Uh, for some reason, somebody's uh, cloned my Quake 3, which is not good. Um, but yes, um, as you can see, I enjoyed these games. I, I had a lot more than that at one point. I had Unreal Tournament, the, the first version of it, which was, to be honest, it wasn't graphically as beautiful as Quake 3, but it was just a better game. It, this has sort of got me into... Uh, PC gaming because I could never originally afford a console and initially PC gaming was if it were on the um, mark like uh, fair circuit a lot cheaper than buying a brand new console the other issue as well was uh, upgradability um, I always wanted a Super Nintendo and I got one about 15 years ago um, which I will show in another video. Um, I've got roughly about 30 games for this, this my Super Nintendo, and although it's not as good, can have it running on a modern TV. Um, although there is a lot of messing around to do it, but the initial re result is good. The only sad thing is you lose quite a lot of colour contrast uh, to these things. So the other issue with the um, Super Nintendo games as well is the ones that have um, got saves have got literal little batteries in them and these batteries unfortunately corrode over time just like a, a CMOS battery in a laptop or a PC that's on the motherboard and these can corrode over, the, over time and they have to be changed because otherwise they start having errors um, the battery was the way around in consoles to actually change it around but um, alas I'd like to actually send it to somebody that I know <laughs> they're doing the job properly because I don't want to open up a cartridge and then to my horror find out that I can't do it again uh, you know it's for ever or a zap the board by accident because these cartridges being about so big have um, 
a little circuit board in them and then the battery to be able to save games because uh, that's the way, only way they could do it at the time before you got into the world of uh, memory cards and things which um, developed on the N64. Uh, the only reason I didn't get an N64 is, is just the initial cost. Not only do you have to get the N64, you've got to get two controllers, um, you've got to get the expansion memory card that goes in the slot, you've got to get the um, memory controllers for your controllers, and so the memory card would actually fit in the controller itself. Um, and you can also get rumble packs, although I'm not a big fan of rumble packs. I'd I don't know why, but um, they even extended the technology to Game Boys. There's a, um, I'm pretty sure there's a Game Boy game where there's an inbuilt rumble pack built into the actual cartridge, if I remember rightly. So it might, gives you the effect of rumbling. But I digress. Now, most of these you can now get on providers. Um, the main one I use because I've had the least amount of issues with is Steam and you can buy these for a good some of these you can buy for a song um, they are pretty cheap and they can run on almost anything because they are significantly old games I mean the, the one or two you cannot find um, but saying that there is good old games um, the only problem with good old games was, or GOG, um, was I downloaded, um, what's it called? There's a Westwood game. So basically, the, the world to, today, they used to have loads and loads of little developers in the 90s. Uh, Westwood was one of them. Westwood was responsible for Command and Conquer prim uh, primarily, but they also did Lands of Law and there's also another game which uh nox that's the one um nox which was um a sort of dungeon crawler in a way um these they also did uh, I, I know there's a purist base out there for them but i can't remember the name of the game um please uh, remind me in comments if you're watching this but there's also another series they did um, which at this moment I can't remember for the life of me uh, but remiss to say if I could remember what it was I'd actually mention it not only that you had ID which were mostly Activision publishing their stuff um, there was a lot of developers around at this time this is before the chaos that exists today um, also the games had a bit more charm back then than they do now I, I found there's some good games now don't get me wrong but when you got the games back then most of them were in a finished state there wasn't issues with them or bugs they went to market pretty much without any faults uh, later on they did come patches I mean I'm currently playing a game which I used to own but unfortunately during all my years it's gone missing um, System Shock 2 now if you've ever played Bioshock or well any of the Bioshocks to be honest System Shock well System Shock 2 is the spiritual successor they've they redid System Shock 1 last year on a modern engine I've not dared to try and play that yet um, because I could never complete System Shock 2 I got close to the end but it's a very unforgiving game even on easy um, there's a lot of YouTubers that do more in depth analysis of System Shock 2 um, if you've never played System Shock 2 and um, intrigued by all means go for it The it's not really a shooter it is a shooter so you can use conventional weapons but you have to maintain them repair them when they break you have to learn skills like hacking 
and uh, sort of hacking security terminals and security turrets. It's very involved, but if you like um, like a role-playing game, but in digital form, I would definitely provide it as a gateway. Uh, there are now many walkthroughs for System Shock 2, um, because it is notoriously difficult, even on easy. Um, when you progress to a certain point, levels that didn't have certain enemy types before have got them in abundance. Which is unfortunate, um, because that would make it make it a little bit better. That it wouldn't have legions and legions of um, one of the uh, enemy types, which is a cyber assassin. So you just wouldn't have hundreds, hundreds of them on a ship. It's a very curious, very very curious thing. Basically, they wander around. You can hear them because they electronic, and they throw little discs, like energy discs, at you to. Because you have a health bar and uh, you can use psionic abilities. Um, I might do a gameplay video when I've um, learnt to use Adobe because um, today I will be subscribing to Adobe Photoshop and all these little apps um, because I know these videos could be better and with editing they'll be a hell of a lot better. Now don't take my word for it. Go to Steam, look at your 90s, the Steam, GOG, even Electronic Arts Store, because uh, unfortunately Electronic Arts own a lot of things now, because in the 90s they went around acquiring IPs and uh, basically trying to become the biggest one in the market. It's not a humble, sadly, EA is not a humble thing. Also, they've had issues with EA Origin, which is another thing that they wanted you to install and um, I've just had nothing but issues with it but don't take my word for it give it a go if you've got access I've got a, a laptop it has got a Radeon in it and it is a relatively modern laptop so with a with the addition of a mouse um, they most of these work properly because the keypad the mouse pad on the um, on the laptop isn't that great really to be honest uh, not for playing games anyway um but yeah so hope hopefully you sort of brings back some memories because in the 90s i played a lot of games i mean the um first game i really ever had was um <laughs> unfortunately it's banned in germany is wolfenstein um there is a super nintendo port which apparently isn't very good um but Doom overshadowed it because Doom they made many many ports and it could almost run on anything um, anyway thank you for joining me and uh, showing you some of what I still have today I, why do I keep them? I suppose they have a sentimental man, uh, value to them uh, System Shop 2 I wish I still had it I, I don't know what happened to it I strongly suspect one of my brothers possibly acquired it. Anyway, wherever you are, whenever you are, have a great day. Just remember that you really want to sometimes find some particularly positive individuals around and enjoy being around them if they're not irritating in some way or form. And um, they can definitely, the people that lift you are the ones that are worth having, um, always. Anyway, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.